फेरत फेरत प्रभाया परिया तो शरणाए नानक की प्रभ बेनती अपनी भक्ति लाए तन 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 जन आया जिस प्रसाद सब जगत तराया तन 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 जन आया जिस प्रसाद सब जगत तराया परम सत्कार योग गुरु खालसा सत्संग जी गज बज के फते बुलाओ वाहे गुरु जी का खालसा वाहे गुरु जी की फतेह गुरु ब्लेस्ड बी इन द कंपनी ऑफ साहिब श्री गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब जी महाराज गुरु साहिब इन द कांडनेस हैव अलाउड अस इनटू द हाउस टुडे that we can take the teachings from those great examples that whose teachings will inform us as to the way that we must guide through this myriad through this maze through this illusion that we can find ourselves in an and the mara says tan 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 jani aaya blessed wonderful blessed are those tan 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 blessed are those jan be tan 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 jani aaya blessed are those who just for the sad by the grace of whom by the grace of the perfect guru just for the sad sab jagat taraya that this whole world can be saved that we can cross over this world the ocean and today as we sit in the company of the guru we can reflect upon that great soul santigani garbachal singh ji khas apdara wale we can reflect upon their jeevani the the events of some some of the events of their life that we can take an example we we hear the name and some someone message me on social media they say they said to me i'm deep singh you often refer to this name bigani garbachal singh ji why is it that their name comes up so much and why is it and it made me think that perhaps we are doing the sang that at this service by not explaining and that through an understanding that we can bridge the gap we can cut out people we can go straight to the source and we can have an understanding of why it's so important and so before we start with the jeevni of sant gani garbachal singh ji we have to have a context and the context here takes us back to sri guru gobind singh ji maharaj the 10th form of sri guru nanak dev ji maharaj guru gobind singh ji maharaj walks upon the earth and the context as to the coming of the importance of sant gani garbachal singh ji We go back to Anandpur Sahib. Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj is doing the Seva of the Khalsa. The Jang has taken place at Muktsar Sahib, and a Guru Sikh is reciting Bani. And they get to the Pankti Karte ki Mitra Karte Jane Ke Jane Guru Sura. Karte ki Mitra Karte Jane Ke Jane Guru Sura. And they get to this Pankti, which translates to that Paramat Paramit Parameshwar Bhai Guru Akal Purukh. karte ki the they the dua mit karte jane the they the know about the do ke jane gur sura only parameshwar why guru knows this ke jane gur sura and the great guru only the perfect guru but when they get to the pankti they mispronounce the shabad they say karte ki mit karte ka jane ke jane they swat the pankti incorrectly without the dolav without say ke jane they say ke jane and that changed the whole meaning from only why guru and the guru knows to only why guru knows we what does the guru know and it was quite disrespectful and so guru maharaj sends one of the saints to go and rebuke that sect and they get a punishment and they get actually a slap and they say maharaj they come to speak to maharaj say, i'm reading bani and i've been punished for reading the shabad of the guru be why is it that i've been received this uh, punishment and guru maharaj explains guru gobind singh ji maharaj they explain 
They say, you're speaking about what you received. Because every time that the Qurbani is disrespected, it's like my bones are being broken. For the Guru and the Shabbat were one. Just a quick example of this. When the Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj was at Hazur Sahib, they were going to leave this physical world. And they say to Baidaya Singh Ji, they say to Baidaya Singh Ji, they say, we're going to leave the world. Baidaya Singh Ji, their heart is filled with Berat, that they're going to be separated from their beloved husband Lord, from our Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. They run up to Maharaj and they go to grab at the feet of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. This is in Guru Pratap Surah's Granth. And when they go to reach for the feet of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, their hand goes right through as if there was nothing even there. And Guru Maharaj would say to Baidaya Singh Ji, do you not yet know? Be I am not the Guru, that the Guru is the Shabbat. That we should have the utmost respect for the Shabbat. So coming back to this example, when Guru Gobind Singh explains that said to be, when you recite Gurbani incorrectly, when you show disrespect, be so much pain is caused to the Guru. At that point, Baidaya Singh Ji is there, the first of the Panch Piyara. They put their hands together and they say, Maharaj, Asita Hamesha Galtiya Karte Rende. We're making so many mistakes. But could you please bless us with an understanding of what is the correct way to recite the Shabbat? And Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj says, this is not the Samana. A time will come when we are not in Jang and I will reveal these teachings. And then to fulfill the Ardasa of the Khalsa, to, to fulfill the Ardasa of the Sangat, later when Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj said, Dam Dama Sahib, they convened the Khalsa and there are 48 Guru Sikhs that are present with Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj. And Guru Gobi Singh Maharaj gives the seva to Baba Deep Singh Ji, they would collect the pens, the paper and the ink. And they would say to Baba Deep Singh Ji, we're going to undertake this seva now. Before we undertake this seva, be, you've asked for us to give the explanations of Gurbani. Be this, the Ard Granth, the collections of the writings are in, the, are in the, that Guru Arjun Dev Ji wrote, that the fifth Guru. All of the writings of the Gurus before them, including the Bani Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj, Guru Amar Das Ji, Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj. They were compiled by Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj. They are now in the house of Tirmal. Tirmal is the older brother of Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji Maharaj. They say, go and ask Tirmal for their grants because now we're going to do the Katha Vichar. We're going to explain what Gurbani actually is. We're going to unfold this treasure and let you, let you see what, this, what the value of this Gurbani is. When the scenes where Baba Deep Singh Ji goes to Tirmal, who's gone away from the Guru's house and tried to create his own, even to this day there are these cults where people try and take us away from the Khalsa. When they go to Tirmal to say, give us that Kajana, give us that treasure, Tirmal will say, be if your Guru is really the Guru of Guru Nanak, if your Guru is really the form of Guru Nanak, then they are one with the Shabbat. Tell them to speak that Shabbat which they are asking me to give them the Bhotiya, the grant of. And so Baba Deep Singh Ji would return empty-handed, but this was all just a play. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, they would go on to recite the whole of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj from memory. And they would say to the Khal Sabi, we are going to bring this form of the Shabbat, this Bani which comes from the heavens, Turki Bani Ai, Din Sagali Chenta, Madai, we are going to bring this Shabbat down from the heavens. And they say to Baba Deep Singh Ji, you will, you will be responsible for bringing the pen and the paper and the ink. And by Mani Singh Ji, who we all know, that great Shaheed, the two great Shaheeds, by Mani Singh Ji, you will scribe what I will speak. And so it was that at Dam Dama Sahib, that Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, in the mornings, they would recite Gurbani from memory, and by Mani Singh Ji would write all of the teachings down, that on the paper and the pens and the ink that Baba Deep Singh Ji would arrange. And in the evenings, Guru Gobind Singh Ji would go through that Gurbani and they would do the Katha, the Vijara, the explanations of all of those meanings to those 48 Singhs that were present in the company of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. This seva would take nine months, nine days and nine Kariya. A Kariya is, is a, a period of time measured in Punjabi, it's about 22 to 24 minutes. I did the research for it, don't ask me how you can work it out. But a Kariya is 22 to 24 minutes. The seva, from the time that Guru Gobind Singh Ji commenced the seva, took nine months, nine days and nine Kariya. And then when the complete Katha, the complete explanations, the complete teachings of Gurbani was completed, 46, all 48 of those six became Gurmukh, they became Mukht, they became liberated. Bidhe Mukht, we can say, without their body, they were beyond the body, they became liberated. 
And 46 of those sect would go and they would just leave this world, they would become Tiyagis from this world, for they realized that this world is false. And they would realize that Maya is false, and they would remove themselves from this world. Essentially, they would become renunciates. But Guru Gobind Singh Mother would say to Baba Deep Singh Ji, stay a little. They would say to Pai Mani Singh Ji, be stay a little. Your seva, you are mocked for the teachings that you've received, but there's a seva for you to do. Be Baba Deep Singh Ji, you are going to start this school of propagating the teachings of Guru Bani. That is what Taksal is. The Taksal is referred to as that place where these teachings is a Taksal traditionally is referred to as a mint, like a refinery. And that's a Taksal, it's a royal mint essentially. Taksal translates to royal mint. But in the context of Gurbani, the Taksal of the Guru is that place where people like us, people like myself I should say, would come here imperfect, it's just a piece of alloy. But as we do matha taking for the Guru, as we stamp ourselves upon the jalan of the Guru, the Guru is implanting their, their worth upon us and we become in that way given value. So a piece of metal is of no value, but when you go into the Taksal and you're stamped with the Guru's teachings, then that value is imprinted. So, you, so Guru Gobind Singh Ji would complete those teachings in those nine months and nine days. They said to Baba Deep Singh Ji, be your responsibility is to stay here and to pass these teachings on that you're going to pass these teachings on and keep these teachings, this university, not for an education in the worldly sense, but an education to those that will take you beyond this world. And by Mani Singh Ji, you will go to Amritsar and you will propagate the Taksal, you will propagate the teachings from that place. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, as they stand before their beloved Piyare, Guru Six, Baba Deep Singh Ji, Pai Mani Singh Ji, they said to Maharaj, Bi Khata Jodhi Bhakti Maharaj, Bi Maharaj, we're in a nand right now. We spent nine months in your company. How can we live a day out in the world? How are we ever going to feel a nun if we are not without you, Maharaj? And Maharaj would say to Baba Deep Singh Ji, they would say, Deep Singh, oh my Piyara, my beloved, because even if your head is cut from your body, you will remain a nun. They say to Pai Mani Singh Ji, be you a part of me now, but even if your body is cut into pieces, you will remain in Ananda. And we know from the Bhajan, we know from our Itihas, that by Mani Singh Ji, who they would refuse to convert to Islam, under force of threat of violence, they would be chopped into pieces, 72 pieces, as they would bring the cleavers to buy Mani Singh Ji's wrist, he would say, stop. Got the fatwa, the price I've been told to pay is if you're gonna cut me limb from limb, be my limbs start from these joints. And he would point to their finger, you can see the picture of Bhai Mani Singh Ji pointing to their finger, be take me from here. As they would be chopped into pieces, they would recite the Shabbat of the Guru and they would be in a nand. Akos Satanam Sri. Why? Baba Deep Singh Ji, they would write, they would write four salutes of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. In identical form to that, that was scribed by Pai Mani Singh Ji. And they would even scribe one form of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj in Arabic, which would, be, which would present to the Far East. And by Mani Singh Ji, Baba Deep Singh Ji, they would carry on that seva, they would even, they were mocked, they were mocked from this world, but we know that they would become great shaheeds. Now why does this, where does this history take us? Because we're so fortunate, this is all happening to bring you into context, we think about it as really old history. Around the same time that Shakespeare was writing Romeo and Juliet, these events were taking place in terms of history. Our history is modern history. Our history is recorded, just as the plays of Shakespeare were recorded, the Lakari and the Banth, that one that would witness this play and play out. That one who is writing this, who is the paper and who is the ink, they are playing this out. And those teachings that Guru Gobind Singh Ji would share with the Khalsa Ji, what is the meaning of this Japji Sahib? What is the meaning of this Ananda Sahib? What is the meaning of these words that make up Sri Sukhumani Sahib Dabari? And there's 1,438 Ans of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj that we sit before today. All of those teachings of the meaning of those Shabbats were passed from generation to generation to generation in the exact same form just as the five pound note would remain exactly the same this year from last year's print and the year before that. And the pound coin that you carry today is the same one that we had yesterday because the print would be identical. In this way, those teachings were passed down from Baba Deep Singh Ji, Pai Mani Singh Ji, and they would be passed down to Pai Sangat Singh Ji, 
Pai Santok Singh Ji and Baba Bishan Singh Ji to Sant Sundar Singh Ji. And Sant Sundar Singh Ji, they would see in the light of a great one that would walk into their Sangat. This is where we come now, with that context in mind. A great Gursik would come into the Sangat and their name was Sant Baba Garbachan Singh Ji Khasak Pindarawale. So Sant Sundar Singh Ji was from a, pain, a village called Pindar, Pindra. And so Pindra Wale, meaning that they were recognized as being from this village of Pindra. And Gyanidhar Bachan Singh Ji, Khasa Pindra Wale, they would go into their Sangat from a young age. And they would ask Baba Ji for blessings that they should receive Amrit. And they would become such a proficient party that it is said that from the age of seven years old, Baba Gurbachan Singh Ji, they would be able to do a Khan Party Seva from seven years old. They would have to find a gadi to put underneath the physical body of Baba Gurbachan Singh Ji because they couldn't reach the arms of the Guru. But their part was so should, an average party will be able to read about 30 arms an hour. About 30 arms an hour, and in two hours they would do 60 arms they would read from Maharaj. But Baba Gurbachan Singh Ji, from the age of seven years old, they were reading about 80 arms an hour. And the part was so should, you could understand every single word. There was a great Premi, Baba Kartar Singh Premi, not the leader of the Taksal in the late years. There was a Gurmukh, and his name was Baba Kartar Singh Ji Premi. And they would say to Baba Gurbachan Singh Ji, they said, when you read Gurbani, when we read Gurbani, we ask you, you know all the meanings of Gurbani. You can tell us even which Angi is on. You can tell us which Raag. Just like a computer search engine, we go to seek you to the max, it's at our fingertips. And they said to Baba Gurbachan Singh Ji, how is it that you're so close to Gurbani? And they would say, before they would come into the Jatha, before they would join the Jatha of the Taksal, they would have done, they did 500 sage parts. They had completely read Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj 500 times. That they had done 125,000 Japji Sada parts. That they would do over 3 million Murmantar. Guru Pyari Sahib Sangha Ji, we throw these stats around. And they're just stats. And unless you're a statistician, they will not mean anything to us. But for me, this got me thinking. <clears throat> I mean, if you're here to clock up a number on a, on a chart, then numbers will mean something. But why was it that Yani Garbhachan Singh Ji would recite so much Bani? And I would be fortunate enough to speak to one of the students of Baba Thakar Singh Ji, who was a student of Baba Garbhachan Singh Ji, Khasa Pindarawala, keeping that lineage alive. And their name is Bhai Paramjit Singh Ji. When I would speak with them, they would give me the answer. They would say to me, Amadeep Singh, you should know this to be true. Be Gurbani is alive. We are not reading a text, my brothers and sisters, nor is the purpose for us to read a text. We are not looking at a scripture or a holy text, my friends. When we sit in the company of the Guru, we are in the company of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj in the 11th form. By Balaam Ji Singh Ji would say to me, but you should know this to be true, that when you're in the company of Guru Bani, you're in the company of the living Guru. And so for Gyanigar Bhattin Singh Ji, this wasn't about reciting Bani that they'd already recited, it was the Ananda that they would have. And the Singhs would say that when Gyanigar Bhattin Singh Ji would recite Bani, their face would be full of red love, because they were looking at and they were having darshan, partaka darshan of the Guru. In fact, on the subject of darshan, written into our history on one occasion, Baba Gurbachan Singh Ji Khasa Pindrawale, they were reciting Bani. And they get to the Bhakti, Darshan Dekat Dokhan Se. And when they get to this Bhakti, Darshan, to have your sight, to have a chance to look upon you, Dekat, to, to, to take the opportunity to look upon you, Dok, all my Dok Nase, all my pain will fall away. And they pause there. And Baba Guru Bhajan Singh Ji would go into Bed Ark and they would recite this Pankti over and over again. Darshan Dekata Dokhana Se Darshan Dekata Dokhana Se What does this mean, my brothers and sisters? We're programmed in this world as we face problems, as we pick up the phone and we hear a tra tragedy or we hear a difficulty or an obstacle placed in our path in a worldly sense, in a financial sense, in a relationship sense, in a societal sense, we have a problem placed in our path, and we look to our hands, we, what, what, what am I supposed to do? What do I do? 
But Guru Maharaj has given us the answer. The, we look straight to our hands and yes, Guru Maharaj has given us Shastra, they've empowered us. They say, you are the givers of Kirpa in this world. Maharaj is Kirpa, their color will run through the Khalsa. But Guru Maharaj has given us his teaching, Baba Guru Bachchan Singh Ji, and all of their might, all of their power, they're giving us his teaching that if we really want to move the dukkha, the pain in our life, let's come to the Guru Ghar and take Darshan. My friends, the education that we receive in the Guru Ghar isn't facts and figures, we're going to get that too. We'll hear that too because our history is so profoundly, so perfectly recorded. We'll get the facts and figures too, but we're not here for facts and figures only. We're here to have an experience. I've heard it put so interestingly that we think that we're human beings trying to find a spiritual experience. The truth of the matter is, we're actually spirit beings. We're actually the form of that light of which we're trying to connect to. We're actually spirit beings caught up in a worldly experience. So Gyani Garbhachan Singh Ji, through their Biyar for Gurbani, would teach us that it's not just about the numbers, that they would clock up those numbers that we just spoke about, but as they would reach the Pankti Nad, the Darshan the the Dog, and I say they would teach us it's about delving deep into the ocean. And in so doing, we'll find that love, that connection. But wouldn't it be wonderful if we had that love in our own hearts, that when we would pick up a Gurkha side, that having Darshan with the Shabbat would take us to Bairag. And the purpose of these exchanges, that we go into the Vijad, that we go into the journey of exploring the Jeevani of these great souls, is to say, yo, it can be done. We haven't got to live just in a worldly sense, in a transactional sense. For these great beings have transversed that place and they live in this place to give us these teachings. Santa Baba Garbhachan Singh Ji Khasa Pindarawale would be appointed by Santa Sundar Singh Ji because of their Pyar, because of their dedication to the Shabbat, they would become the leader of that school that was created by Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. And they would sit upon that takht in the worldly sense and they would regard themselves as a servant of the Khalsa. And what, why they are so recognized in history is when they would be appointed the Jatadar, the leader of the Taksar, that school that was propagated, that was inaugurated by Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj and then propagated by Baba Deep Singh Ji and by Mani Singh Ji. Why it was so important is when they would do the Katha of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, for the first time in our history, those recordings were physically recorded on plays. And their Katha would light a flame and there would be such a revolution in the uptake of Amrit Sanja. Under the auspices, under the guidance of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj and Baba Guru Bhatshya Singh Ji, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands would take Amrit and come into the Pant. From a martial arts perspective, I'm really passionate about training in Vidya. And I think it's important as mothers that we take this role. And you're probably thinking, why mothers over fathers? We'll come on to that maybe in a moment. But as mothers, it's our responsibility to raise warriors. And when you go to an Akara, when you go to, a, a, when you go to an Akara, a place where Vidya is being passed out, one of the ways that you measure the, the Akara is by the quality of the students, be how capable, how proficient they are in defending themselves. And so this, this mariyata of measuring the quality of a teacher by the outcome of their students, when we apply that to Baba Gurbhachan Singh Ji Khasa Pindarawale, the results are staggering. All of the greatest, some of the greatest saints of the 20th century would be students of Baba Gurbhachan Singh, names like Gyani Amorak Singh, Baba Gyani Pritam Singh, Sant Baba Janel Singh Ji Khasa Pindarawale, Sant Kartar Singh Ji, these are all great saints that would be students of Baba Guru Bhattu Singh Ji. At one point, all of the Takhts, all of the Pants Takht, the Jatadar of the Pants Takht, all but one were students of Gyani Guru Bhattu Singh Ji Khasa Pindrawai at one point. So this teaching comes to me, comes to my mind, that in our own way, we've got to understand that the words that we speak, they carry through our, they, they carry past our life. And Guru Maharaj explains this to us. They said that we should be very careful about the way that we speak because the way that we speak can influence other people. If you look at Baba Guru Bhattu Singh Ji, their teachings to this day are influencing us today. I'm a student of those teachings. And so we should think about the way that we speak. How, how is it that we are speaking? Maharaj says, 
ਖਿਆਉ ਨਾ ਕਹੀ ਥਾਏ ਮਾਨਕ ਸਭ ਅਮੂਲ ਵੇ ਮਾਰੇ ਸਿਸ ਇੱਕ ਫਿੱਕਾ ਨੋ ਈਵਨ ਵਨ ਬੈਡ ਵਰਡ ਸ਼ੂਡ ਕਮ ਆਊਟ ਆਫ ਯੋਰ ਮਾਊਥ ਇੱਕ ਫਿੱਕਾ ਨਾ ਗਾਲ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਸਪੀਕ ਸਚ ਹਾਰਸ਼ ਵਰਡਸ ਸਬਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਸੱਚਾ ਤਨੀ ਵਿਦਿਨ ਏਵਰੀਬੋਡੀ ਰਿਜ਼ਾਈਡਸ ਦੈਟ ਟ੍ਰੂ ਲੋਰ ਸੱਚਾ ਤਨੀ ਖਿਆਉ ਨਾ ਕਹੀ ਥਾਏ ਵੀ ਡੋਨਟ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਖਿਆਉ ਹਿਰਦਾ ਡੋਨਟ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਐਨੀਬੋਡੀਜ਼ ਹਾਰਟਸ ਖਿਆਉ ਨਾ ਕਹੀ ਥਾਏ ਮਾਨਕ ਸਭ ਅਮੋਰ ਵੇ ਵਿਦਿਨ ਈਚ ਐਂਡ ਐਵਰੀ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਅਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਦੈਟ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਬਿਊਟੀਫੁਲ ਜੈਮ ਜੂ ਐਂਡ ਅ ਰੂਬੀ ਦੈਟ ਪਰਸਨਸ ਹਾ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਬੀ ਟ੍ਰੀਟਡ ਥਿਸ ਵੇ so gary gar bachan singh ji their teachings we've heard are from that direct lineage to guru gobind singh ji maharaj that guru gobind singh would teach the khalsa just a quick recap that they would teach the khalsa at dam dama sahib of those 48 singhs baba deep singh ji by mani singh ji would be taught charged with passing on and recreating that teaching and that teaching would pass all the way down until baba gar bachan singh ji khalsa pindrawala they would lead that taksal and they would record all of those kathas Baba Gur Bachan Singh ji would complete the katha of Guru Granth Sahib ji maharaj 27 times 27 times they would go through each and every limb of the guru explaining the teachings each one of those recordings would take about one year so you can imagine you can see how much dedication baba ji would have in the propagation of that prachar we've spoken about how they should how one should speak sweetly on one occasion on one occasion the sikhs would the sikhs would come together and when baba ji would do katha the sikhs would be responsible for being there on time baba ji was very punctual they would always start exactly on the time they were supposed to it was a very regimented routine they would wake at 2 a.m. and they would do simran from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. then they would do ishnan they would do panch ishnan and they would do their simran then they would do ishnan they would do their nitnam and then they would do katha until 9 a.m. that was the routine that they would have in the mornings they would do katha of the hukm nama from guru granth sahib ji maharaj and in the evening they would propagate historical katha from guru pratap suraj granth and these teachings would pass down and the khalsa would come and they would bring their reeds which is the stands they would line them up and they would sit and many many khalsa would sit and they would have note pads and they would make notes from baba ji would do the katha and on one occasion gani pritam singh ji who was one of the vidyarthis one of the students of that taksal gani pritam singh ji they were coming to the darbar and somebody had picked up their reel and they taken it and they sat down and they set themselves up and they already had their potti they already had their sentia open for the class to take notes from what baba ji was going to do katha and so gani pritam singh ji is like if you think of musical chairs the music stopped baba ji is about to do katha and they standing there and they haven't got their they haven't got their reel and baba ji starts speaking to them in quite a harsh way they say why are you ready be the baba ji start that time you're standing like this and gani pritam singh ji at that time they were quite young and they got quite upset in their heart they were upset why is baba ji shouting at me in this way i'm not ready and they would leave and then they, what they would do is they would come back in the afternoon the, the usual routine was because baba ji would never travel they would walk everywhere they was going to go they wouldn't have it that the cars would be traveling on foot while they would be sitting on a on a horse in 1905 1920 we're talking about the early years apart this from 19th century baba ji would walk everywhere so in the afternoons the things would do baba ji's malish they would get the blood flowing in their legs and so when the khalsa comes now to rub baba ji's legs and rub the ankles they notice that gani pritam singh this young teenager that they've not come that they're upset so gani gurbachan singh ji they're surrounded by hundreds by thousands of khalsa but they know is that Gary Peterson is the young boy who they rebuked earlier for not being ready until they're not there and they say to their video they say to their student that one of their other students is they say to Veer Singh his name was Veer Ji they were calling him as a doctor they were saying go go and get that young boy who I told off earlier for not being ready for the class and when Gary Peterson he was told to come forward he was probably upset and scared thinking he's going to get shouted at and this great one who now sits at the head of the taksal propagating the teachings that were brought forth upon this earth by none other than guru gobind singh ji maharaj himself as they walk forward gari guru gurbachan singh ji they take their chola and they would only place their chola out if you're going to receive something you place your chola forward like this and then you receive it gari gurbachan singh ji this great saint who is being followed by so many and adored by so much of the panth they would take their chola they would put it up to their ears and in like in indian culture when you take your ears it's a sign of asking for mafi asking for sorrow and they would say to gani pritam singh ji 
He was only a young boy at the time. They weren't probably referred to as Gyanidi at the time, but obviously they were old age now, so we refer to them still respectfully. They said, look, whatever I have said that has hurt your heart, be please place your grievance into my jola, into my jolly, and give me your forgiveness. But what did it mean to be Santa Gyanidi to the Bhattans in Jikasa, Prindaramale? It meant, ikufikka nagalai. Savana me satcha tani. I'm not going to break, I'm not going to speak even one harsh word, even to my junior. And they would have so much satkar for the Khalsa. As we mentioned earlier, that when they would travel from village to village, the Gursits would be reciting Bani. And so Gani Gurbachan Siddhi would say, I can't be sitting above them. I can't be sitting on a raised platform above those that are reciting the Bani. So they would walk everywhere. That great leader, the Tiksar. Be what teaching is this to us? It doesn't mean we've got to abandon our cars, but we should leave our egos at the door if we're lucky enough to sit in the Sangat. That we should leave our egos at the door and understand that great, that great, greater, even greater souls in our own have walked in the company of the Sangat and what example have they been given. That when we're lucky enough to sit in the Langar Hall, that why would we want to sit higher than anybody else on these tables and chairs? To what place do we regard ourselves in our mind, even subconsciously, if we're going to sit on a platform higher than that place when Guru, when Guru Amar Das Maharaj himself would sit, when those great saints would come and sit in the Langar Hall and sit on the floor. Guru Pyari Satsangha Ji, perhaps it's not known, but the Langar Hall is a place of practice. It's not just a place of cuisine, it's a place of practice. Langar Chale Gur Shabata, Langar Chale Gur Shabata, Har Todna Ave Khatiye. Guru Sahib says that the true langar is the Shabbat and it resounds over that food, that food, that langar that which you're eating has had the blessings of the Guru's Karapanga through it, the, bliss, the blessings of equality, the blessings of oneness. That if you're lucky enough to sit in that langar hall, think of Yannick Guru Bhattu Singh walking, even in their old age, for the per chance that they want to be above the Sangat, you place yourselves, if you're lucky enough, in the dust of the Sangat, sit on the floor. Even if you're struggling a little bit, we struggle in this world. We think of any excuse, oh, I've done deadlifts, my back's saying I'll sit on the chair. Stretch yourself a little bit, man, that you should be lucky to receive the blessings. There's really no excuse. We don't need an excuse to lose the opportunity to get the blessings to sit in the sun. I'm going to say that again. We don't need an excuse to deprive ourselves to sit equally with the sun. Let it never be seen again that we sit anywhere other than equal in the Guru's Darbar, in the Guru's Langar of Satana Sri. Vaheguru. So Gyanikar Bhattu Singh would give us his teaching. On one occasion, Babaji is going, they're going to Patna side. It's going to be a celebration of 300 years since the Avtar, since the coming of Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj. And Gyanikar Bhattu Singh they're traveling by train and the Jatha is with Babaji, the Singhs are with Babaji, they would go, they would go propagate, the te propagate the teachings. And the train is stopping at Calcutta. And what would happen is, when the trains would stop, the Khalsa, the Sangat would know that Babaji is traveling through here. The train would only stop for 10 or 15 minutes. But what would happen is the Sangat would find out and the Sangat in that area would come. They had so much shadda, they had so much love, that they would all make prashad there. They would make langar and they would go and they would stop. They would, when the train would stop, they would distribute langar to the Khalsa that is Chaturvarti that is traveling. They wouldn't have access to kitchens because the Khalsa wouldn't eat out. They wouldn't eat at restaurants. So the Sangat is their opportunity to serve those who would otherwise not, not be eating. So the Gurmukhs would come. And one of the Gurmukhs, his name was Indarjit Singh Rishi, he was arranging this. He says to the Khalsa, the, the Sangat, that there be a great saint is coming. Let's make prashad there. Let's vrta prashad to the Khalsa. What teaching is this to us? As I hear these things, the Amadeep Singh, what teaching is this to your mind that if you're ever so lucky to have a chance to serve the Sangat, that the Sangat are passing through and they're just stopping for 15 minutes, that if you're on the train and you see another, and you see another Singh, but don't look down, man. Where does this come from? This inability to acknowledge who we are. Do we really want to be a part of that? That we don't even say good fateh to our brothers, that we don't look at our Singh and and say, yo, my sister, how you doing? as the singing they should to each other. But we look down. Here's the Khalsa hearing that just for 15 minutes they're going to get a glib of Baba Gita Bhattin Sinji and they lay on a langar to serve the Khalsa. What teaching is this to us? That if the opportunity presents itself, take that opportunity from a place of gratitude. If you must, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to serve. That if the Guru should come to your house, 
that is no longer your house. Be open up that house just for those three days, for those 48 hours, and live by the Guru's teachings, and just see how your jivan is, how your life is uplifted. Guru Pyari Satsangha Ji, we hear these teachings, these aren't facts, this isn't a narration of a diary of a great saint, these are teachings for us to take on board. But who is it that we're going to allow into our lives to serve? Maybe this means tomorrow when someone phones us for a little bit of help, and I'm speaking only to myself here, but please do listen in. Maybe that's a train stopping for you for 15 minutes that you can lend a hand, that you can serve that langar of wisdom, that you can serve that langar of assistance, and in this way, you can alleviate perhaps those that are in that train, the hunger of those that may be in that train. For the castes are ones for nothing. The castes are begs from no one, and if you have a chance to serve, it's you that's been blessed, not those that have received your prasadhi. Getting a bunch of Sindhi castes are Pindrawale, and the, the, the Jatha, they arrive at Calcutta, and in those few minutes, the Langar is, is Vardad, and the Langar is Vardad, and the Sangat are eating heartily at the behest of the Sangat that have come to receive them joyously, joyfully. And that teaching is there for us. And in the teaching Rishi, they say to Babaji, say, Babaji, do some katha for us. <laughs> but you are that one whose lineage goes unbroken to Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. But give us some teaching that we can take into our hearts. Ganikar Bhajan Singh Ji, they turn, they say, we only have four minutes before this train is going to depart. <clears throat> be Babaji, please, be the, I say, uh, give us this blessing that you can give us some gems, some jewels, some rubies that will enlighten us. But in those three or four minutes, Gyanikar Pachasiji, they do the katha and they say, this is the essence of life. And this is the point that I want to share with you, the, the art we can still share. They say that Guru Nanak Deji gives this button, Nanak ke heto bhi chari ho, but this is the purpose of life. This is the essence of life. And these three teachings, if we can take them into our heart, we can look at the life example of Gyanikar Pachasiji, we can see this example, if we can take this into our heart and we can use it as an instruction for our minds, in this way our own jivan will become sapala. But what are those three buttons that Guru Nanak Dev Ji shares with us in Raga Gauri that we can take as the buttons, the instructions of life? They say, Guru Sevaho, we serve the Guru, Ara Naam Japo, and recite the name of God. And in this way, Tyagi, remove from your mind the filth of egotism. Mara says, Guru Sevo Ar Naam Japo, be, recite the name of God and do Seva, and in this way, the ego from your mind will depart. Why is it so important that we understand the ego? We won't really hear about the ego being spoken about in the world. In fact, most of the things that we do in the world seek to inflate our egos in the way that we seek to praise others or seek praise from others. And if you look at the music culture of today, which our children are being so conflicted with, as it's being poured into them, almost innocently, because we said there's no, there's no violence in those words, but the violence that is being played out in our, in our hearts as our egos are growing, we should really look at that. Because why is it so important that we address the ego? Because Guru Arjun Deji gives us his teaching. They say, ho ho beat bayo. They say that if you want to understand that what it is that separates you from Paramatma Vaheguru, is they actually just the ego that's there. That the only thing separating us from becoming one with God is our ego. And if we were to look at that, how fragile is this ego? Guru Arjun Deji goes on to explain that the ego is thinner than the butterfly's wings. If you look at how thin a butterfly's wing might be, ho ho beat by your hair beat yo, sula the day's nikitayo. Says Guru Arjun Deji Maharaj, ho ho beat by your hair beat yo, sula the day's nikitayo. I can hear you, Parmetra White, Parmesha White Guru. I can hear you, you're so close to me, but there's something between me and you that stops me from feeling your love. Pambidi ke paat pardo, bin pe ke dur ayo. Says Guru Arjun Dev Ji, what is it that stops me from feeling your love? Pan bidi ke paat pardo. Just the butterfly's wing, how thin that is, there's a, veil of e there's a veil of ego, just that thin, and it prevents me from connecting with you. Bin be ke, without seeing you, dur I you feel so far away, even though my beloved, I know that you're even closer to me than my hands and feet. Sarbe ek aneke swami, sabgata pogave sui. Says Bhagavad Ravidasi Maharaj, 
that you are even closer, closer to us. As close as my hands and feet are to me, that's how close you are to the permission. Why do, why do we feel so far away? Because Guru Maharaj is giving us an understanding that even though Parameshwar is widely so close to us, that veil of ego, that hankar, that I am, that I have this, and that in this way I'm separate and I'm distinct and I'm higher than the others around me, in this way that veil of ego, which is thinner than a butterfly's wing, its existence been a bit okay? because you can't see through it, do the I only feel so far away. You'll be your own witness. Be how much do we have in this world? If somebody told you that you would have what you have right now financially, if somebody told you 10 years ago that you're going to be sitting here in this situation, would you be happy? You'd rip their arms off to be where we are with the growth in house prices, the growth of asset values, and so on and so forth. And yet with all of that which we've accumulated, accumulated as individuals, as families, as a bunt, there is so much, there is so much indifference to all of that when it comes to a a thought of how, how, how happy we are. Why is that? Because we're not looking inwardly, we're not looking to destroy that ego. Well, how is it that we can destroy that ego? Again, you got a bunch of things you would wake every morning at 2 a.m. for two hours, they would do simon on the Guru Mantar of Guru Nanak. Why? Why? Because why Guru? Guru Mantar hai japa hong ne khoi. Because the Guru Mantar of Guru Nanak destroys our ego. It's that karam khela. It's the one thing that we can do that will remove our ego. Guru Pihari Sasaka Ji, let's have it straight. The single most important thing that we can do in our day is to recite the Guru Mantra Guru Nanak. The single most important action that we can undertake is to develop a relationship with the mantra, the Guru Mantra Guru Nanak. Baba Attar Singh Ji would, with every step, recite the Mantra Guru Nanak. They would say, Vahe Guru. Vahe Guru. Because no step would be wasted if each step was taken on a journey, an inward journey to Parmeshwar of Vahiru. Tirat Nava Najao, Tirat Naam Hai, Tirat Shabat Di Jara, Antar Gyan Hai. We're all trying to go somewhere. We all think that we're going to get there on our feet. Even when we're trying to go to a spiritual place, we think we're trying to go there on an aeroplane. Mara says, Dirat Nava Najao, people are going to all sorts of places, be the true Dirat, the true pilgrimage. Dirat Naam Hai. The true Dirat is to take the Shabbat and install it in your heart. Dirat Shabbat Bi Jara. The true Dirat is to take the Shabbat and to come into the Sangat and to do Bi Jara. To listen to the Katha, the Guru. Dirat Shabbat Bi Jara Antar Gyan Hai. And in this way, your true knowledge of who you are, where you've come from, and why with all of this worldly wealth, we feel so poor inside. And why it is that those great saints, Nanak Pagata Sadavigasa, Nanak Pagata Sadavigasa, speaking of wealth, the house of Gyani Garbhacha Singhji, the Tiksal, the Samparta, the Sosh, the Army, the Khalsa, would be bestowed lashings of offerings, as you can imagine. Even to this day, the house of the Guru wants from no one. The Guru bestows all gifts. But whenever the Sangat would come and they would make offerings to Gyan Gurbacha Singhji, Babaji would give all of those things to the Khalsa. They would keep none for their own. On one occasion, someone donated money and they said, we don't need that money. We just need enough for our prasad there. And they would give it back. Have you ever known such a thing? They would give it back. Because why? They were beyond this world. They were beyond this Maya. And in this way, the world would worship them. But Gyan Gurbacha Singhji would always worship the one. A great a Gurmukh would come, his name was Gurmukh Singh Orissa. This great Gurmukh would come to Gyanik Garbacha Singh Ji and they came with a, a trunk. So the Sings when they would go and say that they would stay in the Tiksal, they would keep all of their items in a small dechi, like a chest. Because of the room, they would have a very simple way of living because they weren't there in the worldly sense, they were there to take the spiritual teachings and they speak up they take up tight space only in your mind and your heart. But this Gurmukh who'd fallen in love with Babaji. What did Mahaprabhu they were affectionately referred to in Baba Gurbhacha Singh Ji Khasa Pindarabhi? Then they would come to Baba Ji with their Dekshi and they would take out their Jola, they would take out their Sabban, they would take out their, their few items that they have and they would make that offering to Baba Ji say, Baba Ji, everything I have is yours. And this is the Yenikar Bhacha Singh Ji Khasa Pindarabhi that they would be giving so many wonderful things in the worldly sense, but never corrupted. And in that moment, 
Baba Gurbachan Singh Ji, they would stand up, they would give Gurbak Singh or he said, they'll give him a big jati, they'll give him a big hug. Perhaps to those that were onlooking, that had donated so many masses of land or wealth or whatever they would be donating at the time, they would say to Baba Ji, they would perhaps ask the question, why are you being so loving? They say, this Gurmukh is Sarvan Sadani. Because, and my understanding of that is this, you may offer lots and have lots still, but this Gurmukh Singh Orissa, they have only what they have and they offer it all with no ill will. Sarvan Sadani is that one that offers everything. Who is the original, who is the one that teaches us the meaning of Sarvan Sadani? Siri Guru, Gobind Singh Maharaj. For what would they give? When they would stand before the Panj Biyare, and beg for the same Amrit that they had to guard to the Panj. The Panj would say to him, Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, we've given our heads to receive this gift, but what would you give? And Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj would say, be in time to come, I will sacrifice my whole family. I've already given my father, from Anandpur Sahib, I sent my father to give Shahidi. Be in time to come, my mother Gujar Gaur, my mother, in time to come, Baba Fateh Singh Ji, Baba Jorava Singh Ji, the, the Shote Sahajade, the Jal Sahajade, they will all be given for this gift that you're going to bestow upon me today. Guru Pyari Sahaj Sangha Ji, we cannot speak, it would be remiss of me not to speak of the Seva that Gyanagar Bachchan Singh Ji did, of the Amrit Singh Jars that they would undertake. Tens of thousands would take Amrit. And I'm going to just share something with you that was really interesting. When we were listening to Katha, we listened to the Shahidi Katha, I heard this, so I hope that this stays with me for the rest of my life. For if nothing else, I will be forever grateful for a chance to be a part of this class of bunt. Maybe the lowest rung on the ladder, the lowest level, but just hear this Guru Pyani Sadhsanghaji. At the time of Gyanin Karabhati Siddhi class of Pindarwale, there was another Mahapurka, another great saint. And they were from the Gaur Serawale um, group. There would be lots of Sera. And when they would leave this world, hundreds of thousands would come to their funeral to pay respects to this great Mahapurka. And many days had passed since they left this world, and it is said that their jaws, that their light has gone to Dharamraj. Dharamraj is where the, where the jaw goes in the worldly sense to be judged. And depending on your jittal and your gulp and where your actions and your thoughts have been, you'll get, your, your lekha will be read out. Eho lekha lika jane and all of those things which you have done, and then you'll be judged. And this is the worldly sense, this is the Vedic understanding of things, but you'll hear why this doesn't necessarily apply to the Khalsa. And he goes to be judged before Dharamraj, and Tarabraj, they come off of their takht. Tarabraj is the one that whose account the, the account is read to, and then the account is then decided upon. And Tarabraj says to this God Seva Wale Mahapurukh, they say, see, you've done so much Seva, I mean, what do you want? They go, I've only got one Icha, we let me go and have Darshan of Guru Govind Siddhi Maharaj, Akko Satanam Siddhi Vahiguru. They go, let us go and have a chance to look upon Siddhi Guru Govind Siddhi Maharaj. By Tarabraj, they come off their takht, they say, ask for something else. Be anything to see Kosh Manglo, even if you want, you can take my takht. Your seva is so parvan, you can sit on my takht. They go, nay. I only want one thing, be let me have a chance to have darshan of Guru Gopsi. Let me go to that realm where the Khalsa resides, where the Kirtan of Guru Nanak Pacha resounds. And Dharma says, look, I can't let you to that place. That place which you're asking to go is reserved for the Guru Khalsa, those who have man the bachas of the Guru. And to see Enna Seva Kamaya, you done so this much seva, but you never took Amrit, you never drank from that sword. But that place for the Guru Khalsa is reserved for the Guru Khalsa alone. And I don't know what to do with you, for what else is more fitting for one of your service? And then it is said that Gyanika Bhattar Singh back on his plane, in this worldly sense, Gyanika Bhattar Singh is there on the funeral pyre. And that body of that Gaur Seva Wale Mahaprabhu, they set up and they turn to Gyanika Bhattar Singh who's even come to this funeral. They say, Sano, Amr Chakao, Kira Pakkar Kya, Amr Chakao. Guru Gobi Siddhi Maharaj would convene the, would, would convene the band, and they would Chakao, Amr Chakao, is like, Gaur Seva Wale Mahaprabhu, what teaching is this to us? Be, let's just be straight about this. As sick we are on a path, and it's not for any of us in this room to judge one another, but it is for each other, from a place of love to support each other that we grow, right? So we shouldn't sugarcoat this. Every one of us should have it on our agenda, be Matt Amara Shatran. For great great getting good budget city, what would they spend their life doing? They would dedicate their whole life to inaugurating those into the cars of Banth. And if it's at least on our agenda, then we can work towards it. If we're walking around this earth, and we're not even, it's not even on our agenda, 
then we're really going to struggle. And it's not, and we don't say that from a place of ego, we say it from a place of love. My Ustad, Gyanis Sukrat Singh Ji, who is a student of this lineage, whose teachings go back to Gyanis Guru Pachan Singh Ji, Khasa Pindramale, they were a student of Baba Thakur Singh Ji, indirectly, and so on to Gyanis Guru Pachan Singh Ji. They would say to me something which is really beautiful. They say, when you see something doing wrong, why would we, why would we want anyone to suffer? From a place of love, we should share these teachings. So this is not in any way meant as an insult. It's from a place of love, we have to coax each other to a place of truth, to a place of progress. On our agenda, it should be that we will join with the Guru Khalsa, that we are so lucky enough that we can partake in this lineage. But why else, where else would we want to be? And to be honest with you, having gone on this journey together with you today, Guru Pyari Sarsanghaji, where else would we want to join? In your heart of hearts, where else would we want to direct ourselves? We could be part of any private members club, any gym, any golf course. All of these worldly places, they will seem so irrelevant right now when we hear the Jeevani Katha of Gyanikar Pachasinji. We could join to any place in this world and it all just seems so irrelevant compared to what we could be a part of if the Guru is merciful and we make that effort udam kare palke parpati isnan kare amrasar na that we should make that effort to wake and in this way we can we can in this way join with us Guru Nanak Pacha Shukrana Guru Gobis Ji Maharaj Shukrana Baba Deep Singh Ji Pai Mani Singh Ji Shukrana thank you for allowing us to learn these teachings that have liberated you that we can be blessed you liberated the sins then you liberate us still be Guru Maharaj blesses that we can join with the Khalsa Panth, that we can do justice, that we can keep our gifts, that we can remove, our, we remove intoxicants from our life, that we can take Amrit, that we can make progress, and in this way, we can become one with the Guru Khalsa. We must have made many, many mistakes. We can ask you for your blessings now, Sangadi, that we can be blessed by you. You are the Sangha, the Guru Gobis, and Maharaj. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guruji's message. Link is in the description below. Vaheguruji ka khalsa, Vaheguruji ki fateh. Vaheguru